Thing. You're not gonna do an intro with a little bit of music in the background? Yeah. It'll take just a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, oh boy. <laughs> Ron, Ron, this is uh, all Georgia fans have come out of a deep slumber and they are all celebrating today. The Georgia flags are back out in front of the houses. Um, you know, Mark Rick apparently has a little more zip in his step. It's, it's a celebration among Georgia fans, and it can only be one thing. Something had to happen at Florida. But um, according, I mean, I'm still in a little bit of shock that it went down this way, but apparently Urban Meyer has resigned He's quitting, he's stepping down at Florida, and he, he's gonna go spend some time watching his daughters play volleyball. Yeah, yeah, I heard, heard him say that. Uh, and both of them are Division One prospects. Man, that's amazing. Uh, I don't know that I've ever heard of a story like that before, um, where, uh, y you know, you got a guy making $4 million a year, he's got a he, he's got a legacy that he's building down there, um, a, a tremendous program at Florida. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really know what to say about it. I mean, I, I don't know why he can't go see his daughters play volleyball while he's still coached there, but maybe, uh, maybe they won't let him have any time off at all. But I, I can tell you one thing, Steve Spurrier, he, he doesn't work for South Carolina 24-7. He, he doesn't. And I know a lot of coaches, they don't work – they don't work 24-7 like Urban Meyer does, so maybe this is the only way he can do it. I, I guess so. I guess uh, you know. I guess it would be hard for him to go somewhere because everybody's going to come up to him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to come up to him because he doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, after they got beat by Florida State and, and they got beat by South Carolina for the East Championship, uh, he, he doesn't have to worry about that as much. I mean, uh, I just think that's just part of the game, and I, I think you just got to handle it the right way. But um, anywhere he goes, he, he's going to get that. I mean, if he thinks he can come up here to Georgia Tech and somebody ain't going to say something to him, um, it, it just ain't going to be the case. But I, I don't know. I mean, I talked to him down there at Media Days uh, this past summer, and he, he told me then. Um, he said that uh, he said his, da his daughters were all over him, that uh, they wouldn't spend enough time with him. And uh, I told him, I wish my daughter was doing that to me. Uh, she's the exact opposite. She wants to spend more time away from me. But, um, you know, I, I just think, uh, you know, I think sometimes people get caught up in a whole bunch of stuff like that. And um, apparently, uh, I, I mean, no, everything that I know about Urban Meyer, his parents came and watched him and his sister play sports and they never missed a game when he was growing up. And, and I don't know, maybe it's wearing on him. Maybe he feels guilty about it. And, and I can understand some of that. But um, by the same token, um, you know, I don't know that football was, has been very fun for Urban the last two years. And it might just be, it might just be so much pressure with having uh, winning a national championship and, 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 and maybe some home pressure, too, that he's not spending enough time with the family. But, um, you know, basically what I know about this kind of stuff is after, uh, after about a year, they're going to be ready for him to go back to work. And they're going to be like, hey, Dad, we want you going. you got to spend your time doing something else. So oh, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, poor Chop, uh, poor Chop was real happy when he heard that uh, Urban Meyer uh, had, uh, had retired. Oh, I know. I told Jay this. There's no doubt in my mind that Florida's going to get another great coach. Uh, but it is nice to see him so, in so much turmoil right now. That <laughs> it brings me a lot of happiness. <laughs> but, you know, you know, Florida fans right now think that, you know, that they own Georgia and that, shoot, they could get Pee Wee Herman and they could still win. <laughs> hey, um... Hey, did you hear about the two guys that uh, that got their resumes down there to Florida right off the bat? Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, say. Bobby Bowden and Vince Dooley both sent their resumes in. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> I 
<laughs> you can, hey, you know Bobby Belton would love to have that job and go back and beat the and beat the Seminoles after they ran him out of there. <laughs> wow. Hey, I'd like to see it. I would too. I I'd would like too. To see Bobby down there taking care of Florida. <laughs> he, he could probably pull it off. <laughs> Well, well um, when I called Pork Chop, you know, I thought y'all were having a Christmas party there. When I called up, he was, uh, you know, he was celebrating. I knew, I was like, oh boy, it's going to be one of those kind of nights. Y'all got to go in there and make sure he ain't got into some eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, I, I mean, I, I'm just telling you, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm in... I'm not. I wasn't completely shocked when I heard the news because you know he he basically did the same thing last December, but um, we are right in the middle of recruiting wars going on right now. Florida, you know, I, I, I mostly read the rivals. They're they're ranked at number nine right now. So um, you know he's got a pretty good recruiting class, and and typically when things like this happen. You know, I, I would be very surprised if his assistants are, are staying around for very long. You know, he got four new assistants after last year. So I know those guys are probably, uh, they're probably sweating it out right now on, on knowing what they're going to do for employment. No, no doubt. Two questions for you. First of all, uh, who, do you, who do you think would be maybe a front runner for that job? And secondly, what other team could benefit the most uh, from uh, maybe some of these uh, commitments changing their mind. All right, I'm going to answer the second question first. I think that uh, most likely Florida State will will uh, benefit the most because Miami's looking for a coach, and now Florida will be looking for a coach. So I think Florida State has the most to uh, benefit from it. But I would not count out any of these SEC schools going down there. I think Auburn will be down there. Alabama will be down there. The Gamecocks love Florida. They, they love going down there. So but can they get any more? They've got like 20, uh, 25, and then we know Clowney's going to South Carolina. Oh, you, uh, you know that for sure? I know that. That's, that's uh, guaranteed. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hey, Ron, you, you know the deal about it with South Carolina. They uh, All those guys, they, you know, they got to qualify first. So, you know, just because they got 25 on the list – they usually have about three or four that don't qualify. So, I mean, you know, they're still... They're, they're awesome. Well, um, okay, so I think I, I do think that Alabama, Auburn, um, they're, they're going to be going over there and trying to snag up a couple of those guys. And, uh, you know, I mean, Mississippi State's going to be going down there. I, I think you're going to see a heavy influence of SEC coaches going down there, spending some time down there. Now, um, let's talk about the job a little bit. You know, everybody right off the bat, they're like, they're saying that uh, Mississippi State's coach Dan Mullen would be the front runner, but um, he, he very well could be. But I would, I would venture to say that Florida started looking for a coach since last Christmas, and they, they've, they've been on the lookout for coaches. So, uh, you know. Uh, you know, knowing Jeremy Foley, he, he's probably going to – I would be very surprised if he went after Dan Mullen or one of the coaches like Charlie Strong that's at Memphis. I, I just don't think he's going after those guys. I think he's going after somebody like one of these West Coast coaches, kind of like he did with, with Meyer. He likes going after these guys that are, that are undefeated. He might go after somebody like TCU's coach. Um, any of those teams in the top ten, I, that uh, especially with those smaller schools, I think they're. I think they would be more likely to be the next coach at Florida. Right. Yes. Maybe a, a, a Boise State coach, a TCU yep. coach, like you say, Gary Patterson, or yep. one like that. Yeah. And, um, and and they got enough money to to buy somebody like that out because I know Gary Patterson just signed. I, I think he just signed another extension, like a three or four year extension. But they'll they'll um, they they could buy him out with nothing. Yep. Yep. So I, I just think that Foley's been on the lookout. He's not. This is nothing new to him. He and and I would be very surprised. They already did that once where Spurrier leaves and they and they hire on Ron Zook and and that didn't work. And I know that it had a lot to do with Ron Zook's personality, but I, I do think that 